and welcome back to Beyond the Curl. Today we are making this gorgeous bunting. We are making um, kind of traditional style triangle bunting. Um, we are adding some edging and I'm also showing you how to make a couple of different patterns today as well. Um, a couple of different styles of um, triangle. Um, just to vary it up a bit if you want to. So I'm going to show you the watermelon and I'm also going to show you, I can just find it and grab it, this one. Now I've got lots of ends showing, so excuse those ends from showing, but I have this um, pizza. So bring this up to the camera. There we go, I have this pizza as well. Yes, I've just tied them on the back. <laughs> so I have this pizza slice as well to show you. You could make something for like your kitchen or um, patio or somewhere with some food. Um, and um, yeah, so that's what we're making today. Um, it is great fun, very simple, and it uses the triangles that we've used in previous, um, previous videos. So, Stay tuned and let's have a look at this beauty. I will hopefully have links in the description box below to the timestamps of when different parts of the video will take place. Um, and I think this is going to be a two part video um, because um, I've got loads to show you. So um, I'll hopefully pop some on the screen here or they'll be in the description box below. Um, okay, to those various um, places when I do the, the various parts and also um, the link to part two will be in that description as well so stay tuned and see how we're going to do this so before I say um, too much more um, if you want to skip all of this intro and everything that I'm about to say then there should hopefully on screen somewhere now there will be um, the time marker of where you need to skip to or if not, it'll be in the description box below, um, whichever I've managed to do. Um, okay, so traditional bunting in triangles. Um, in the previous unit on triangles, we made the single crochet granny, uh, single crochet triangle. What am I talking about? I've got squares on the brain from last year. Um, so we made this solid single crochet triangle and that's what we're going to base today's on but you could use any solid triangle that the solid shapes are better um, and in this um, single crochet triangle I, I will pop a link to the triangles playlist um, below um, if you want to have a look at those tutorials if you haven't already and as always the files and patterns are in the Facebook group as well and there's a link to that below as well um, so with this, you can change it up however you like. You can have them in one colour, you can stripe them, you can have colourful blocks. I've got more stripes and blocks here. Um, so that's the, the, the triangle we're going to use today. But just to show you other types of solid um, square uh, triangles you can use, we've got the, the um, closed-in granny stitch. It's got a nice solid side. Um, we've got the ribbed and the alternative ribbed um, triangles they've got nice solid sides as well for attaching and for doing the board around we're going to put borders on them um, some of them look kind of finished already without a border but certainly these ones um, would, will look so much better with a border so there's the ribbed one and then you could use one that's not exactly closed and solid it's got a decorative insert, but the outer edges are all solid stitches. You've got a nice solid outer for connecting them and for doing a border. And likewise with this floral one too, you've got a nice solid um, outer edge for doing a border and connecting. So you can use any of those type of sort of solid uh, triangles that you like. As I said, we're going to focus on this single crochet triangle so they all these patterns are in the Facebook group and they are all them um, tutorials in the playlist below okay so this is the plain single crochet and as I said you can just leave it plain and that is beautiful and lovely in itself you can have all one color you can change it up you can you know um, you can use however many colors you like um, or a variation 
Um, so that's that one, which we have shown you before. But today, just for some variation, I'm going to show you these two. I've got a watermelon slice. It has too many seeds. I know, I went a bit seed crazy. But there's the watermelon slice. And as you can see, the only difference is the colour changes and then adding the seeds. So simple, simple to change it up from something plain and potentially boring to... I actually love grey, so that's not boring to me. But you can make it into something more interesting, if you like, just by colour changes. And I, I find that remarkable about crochet and colours, that it changes something so regular into something quite different and, and clever. Um, and then I've got this one. Excuse all the ends showing a bit. I haven't sewn these on, actually. I've just tied them on for now. This is my pizza slice, which again, I've got a colour change here. So I've got the base and then I've got the crust. So there's uh, two colours there. And then I've just done some little pieces here for the toppings. I've done some pepperoni, big and small. And then I've just done some like slices of pepper, like bell pepper. Um, and you could just change this up as much as you like. I could have put some yellow peppers on there or some little sweet corn pieces, mushrooms. Um, you can just change it up however you like. Get creative with those little scraps of yarn that you've got. Because these really did not take much yarn at all. So I am going to show you how to make these two. And then I'm going to show you how you can make your triangles of whatever design into that beautiful bunting. So let me grab the colours for the watermelon and I will show you how we make it. Okay, so I've got a corally, um, sort of coral pink colour here um, for my watermelon. Um, and you just want to start, um, I'm not going to do you an in-depth tutorial on this triangle because, as I said, um, I've already done that and it is in the playlist below um, for the single crochet triangle. So I'm just going to get you started on this without an in-depth tutorial. So with a slip, uh, slip knot on your hook, chain two. And then you're going to put two single crochets in the second um, chain from your hook. So the one right by the slip knot, just pop two single crochets into there. Okay, so you've got two single crochets. Chain one and turn one single crochet into the first stitch and two single crochets into the last stitch. So this is row two and you now have three stitches. Chain one and turn one single crochet in the first two stitches and two in the last stitch. So row three, you now have four stitches. So you've always got one stitch more than the number of the row. So for row four, you will have five stitches. So again, chain one, turn your work, one single crochet in each stitch and two in the last stitch, okay? And that is as simple as that. So I've now done one, two, three, four, five. So that was row six and I've done, no, that was row four and I've got five stitches. So row six, row, row five, sorry, we'll have six stitches, row six will have seven and so on. So you want to continue this until you've made 20 rows of this coral, um, the, the the fruit part colour, um, 20 rows and that will be 21 stitches so keep work, if you don't want to count your rows just keep going until you have 21 stitches along the top of your row. Okay when you've made your 20 rows and have 21 stitches along the top we're going to join our white yarn. So what you need to do is in your last stitch, just take it back. So here's the last stitch, just take it back to having the two loops, okay? And if you undo the stitch completely, don't worry, just start the stitch again until you have those two loops on there, okay? And then you're going to join your white yarn through that stitch. So it just gives us a nice seamless finish. So, make a loop with your white yarn, leave a tail, pop that loop on the hook. So I've got no slip, not just the loop. And then I'm just gonna hold the work 
and pull that through those last two loops like so okay and then I am going to chain one I'm gonna hold um, that coral yarn and white yarn with my finger at the back and I'm going to chain one turn the work around and then I like to work over my uh, the white tail the new color I like to work over that just to help secure it a bit okay so I'm going to make the first stitch now this last stitch will be a little loose in your coral color let's make your first stitch and then second and I'm just working over and around this white tail so I'm just going to make the first few stitches and then I'm going to pull this coral colour down a little bit just to pull that tight and then I'm going to snip off leaving a tail there we go it's my tail leave that for sewing in and I'm going to continue this row working over the white this coral colour will get sewn in at the end I'm just going to continue this row as before and I'm going to make three rows of white okay so I will have uh, let me check your last row of white will have 24 stitches so you're doing three rows of white ending with 24 stitches so that will be row 23 23 so 24 stitches so when you've done your three rows of white and you have 24 stitches now we are going to change to the green in exactly the same way that we changed to the white so I'm just going to back up partially on that um, last single crochet to get the two loops on my hook and I'm going to take the green with a loop just as so on the hook and pull through just like so and then I'm going to hold on to those other tails of yarn and I'm going to chain one turn my work around this time I'm going to hold the green out the back of my work and just work over making those single crochets just as before nice and simple and again I'm going to make three rows and that will make 26 rows in total and you will have 27 stitches at the end of your third row so work up three rows 27 stitches and fasten off so I will see you when I have completed these three green rows. And don't forget to cut this white yarn. So cut that leaving a tail. Push that aside and continue with your green. So here we go. I finished off my three green rows and it now comes to 27 stitches. So you've got 26 rows all together. So just to recap, in case you've been watching this and then you're going to make it, there's 20 rows of the coral, three rows of white and three rows of green. Okay, making 27 stitches at the end. So all that's left to do, um, I've sewn in my ends um, after that. Sorry, I've done that. Okay, so the ends are all sewn in and I've done it as neatly as I can. So this is fairly reversible. So depending on if you've got it hanging loosely like this or whether you've got it against a wall, um, if you've got it hanging loosely and it can be seen from both sides, then it is quite neat on the back. Okay, so just bear that in mind. Um, so all that's left is to do the seeds. Now, as I said before, I have got rather a lot of seeds on here. <laughs> I went a bit crazy. <laughs> um, so all I'm going to do is take some black yarn 
and I'm using the same um, weight of yarn as I've got here for my triangles um, just so that it doesn't disappear because as you can see you've only got like one little piece of it so um, it just means it doesn't disappear into your work um, you could use any other colour um, seed if you like um, I know some watermelons have um, well I forgot so much yarn I don't need all that um, some watermelons have kind of like white seeds don't they so you can, you can make these whatever colour you prefer so just secure this back before I forget love these little bobbins love 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 them they're great fun to make too um, so I'm just going to grab my needle which now I've lost there we go when you put something in a safe place <laughs> where is that safe place Okay, so I've just got a piece of yarn and um, I'm just going to use my needle and then I'm just going to, um, I'm going to do it um, from the back. I'm going to attach it into the back part of a stitch. So make sure that you can't see any of the needle from the front. Go through and then I'm doing this so that I don't have to use a knot. And it just makes it sort of secure but hidden. So then I'm going to go back around the stitch in the same place and pull through just to secure that yarn. Okay, so that's like now nice and secure. And then all I'm going to do is look at the front. Where am I? And I'm going to go down into the natural holes that the stitches make, stitches and rows make. It's going to go down there. And then I am just going to not pull too tightly. I'm just going to go up into another hole that's a natural hole and make a little line. Okay, I think these seeds I'm probably making are a little bit bigger than the previous ones. And then all I'm going to do is try and make sure that this is as reversible as possible in case you want it to be a hanging one that's, you know, um, people can see the back of. Um, and what I'm going to do to try and keep it as hidden as possible, this extra yarn, I'm going again through the back of the stitch, making sure that the needle doesn't show from the front. And that means you won't see the yarn at the front. OK, so you can see a little bit of it there, but not too much. OK, so I am just going to go through another little way trying not to show any from the front this is probably the most tricky part if you want it to be reversible okay and even if you can see some the neater you can get it the better um, if you want it to show from both ways then you don't want it to be sort of all lots of yarn going all over in any direction so um, just make it neat okay so going to do a few of these okay so there you can see I'm making um, bigger ones this time and I'm just going to put a few um, and do a couple of rows and each time all I'm going to do is just thread this through as neatly as I can under the stitches okay to try and hide as much yarn as possible and keep it as neat as possible Okay, the other thing you can do, and so you can see a little bit of the yarn there at the front, but it's, it's a bit forgiving. We'll let ourselves off of that one. Okay, the other thing you can do is you could make two of these if you want them to be hanging across somewhere so that you'll see both sides. The other thing you can do is to make two of these or to make double and then back them onto each other so it's thicker but you have really neat sides showing and that's what you can do with any style of your square um, triangle sorry this pizza one will have a lot of ends at the end so um, just you could put two together if you prefer and just sew them together and um, it would be nice and neat all the ends will be in the middle you can see this one I tried to keep it as neat as possible but it's still got lots of bits going on 
Um, so it is tricky to hide all of that yarn. But just do your best. And um, if it's going to be hanging against a wall, then no one's going to see the back. I wouldn't worry about it. So you can just go for it and just be as haphazard as you like. So I'm going to do a few more of these and then I'll show you the finished result. And there we go. I finished mine. Um, and I didn't worry too much about the back of mine um, in the end. I was just showing you that. But I'm not worried about the end of mine because um, the back because mine is most likely to go against um, a wall so no one will see the back so I've just done some tinier seeds um, along the bottom there so definitely this one looks better than this but this one still looks like a watermelon um, my husband knew what this was and um, that's always a bonus for me if he recognises what it is it means that just about anyone will recognise what it is <laughs> um, so there we go that's the watermelon done so I'm going to show you how to do the pizza um, in just a second so watermelons and now we're going to move on to pizza okay so for this pizza if I bring this in close you can probably now see there is a colour change here very subtle colour change for me because I had two yarns that were very similar um, but this is, is entirely up to you you can make it as realistic or as kind of uh, cartoony as you like really um, the um, is it kawaii kawaii um, things are quite popular now you know the things that have the faces so actually this watermelon you could have done a little face here if you'd have preferred rather than doing the seeds and people still would know um, and that would look like the seeds down there um, but the, the, the little cute um, is it Japanese things with um, the faces if I've got that all wrong then I apologise if I've got the wrong nationality and the wrong name um, but they're all in so you can do them as sort of cute and caricature cartoon like or as realistic as you like okay so I sort of went for a kind of realistic ish look for this one so I happen to have two um, colors of yarn that were very similar this yellowy gold color I don't know how it's shown on camera because the sun's quite bright in here at the moment so I can't see my screen very well but this yellowy kind of gold which I used for what I'm calling the pizza base and then I've got Oops, slightly more subdued shade of beige beigey brown here that I used for the crust okay if you only have one color that's really that you think is really suitable then you could introduce a red for a like tomatoey color so if you look here I've got two different shades of red a bright one and a darker one and you can introduce a sort of darker one maybe or whatever for um, a tomato color and you can separate your um, make the crust stand out a bit more by doing a single row of red to show like tomato um, the tomato puree base and that will just indicate your crust a bit better if you want to you don't have to do that at all so to make this you're going to do exactly the same pattern as you did for this and this okay exactly the same we're doing the single crochets working up with two in the last stitch but you're going to make 23 rows of the base colour so that's my yellowy gold colour 23 rows so if you prefer to note 24 stitches okay 24 stitches of the base and then I did three rows of the beige crust okay three rows of the beige crust ending with 27 stitches so you always end with 27 stitches so if you prefer um let me just remind you of that again so i'm going to tell you 24 i'm going to tell you in stitches so 24 stitches for your last row of the base color and then 27 stitches for the end row of your crust okay that's the standard now if you want to introduce a red to separate if you've only got one color um, and you could then do 23 stitches of base color one row for 24 stitches of red and then your last rows with 
the um, same color um, just use the same color to do the last three rows of 27 so 23 stitches of your base 24 stitches of tomato and then 27 stitches of the same base color okay I hope that's clear enough rewind it if you need to repeat um, those stitch counts okay so that's how you can do the base and do it in exactly the same way with the color changes as we did here by doing the change in the last two loops of your single crochet okay exactly the same way and then I will show you how to make these little pieces of topping okay so these circles and these circles I am calling pepperoni and um, I know on pizzas over here we tend to have tiny bits of pepperoni and bigger pieces of pepperoni so but obviously you could use them um, count them as whatever um, if you did a brighter bread you could count it as a tomato slice um, so I've got two different reds here so I'm using this darker red for that and it is just so so simple you don't need much yarn at all so you can see there is not much yarn on this little bobbin at all um, and that's why I save nearly all my like if I get a tiny end of yarn I keep it because these tiny little bits you just don't need much for so I am going to start with the magic ring and you don't need a very long tail because when you make a magic ring it tends to go up quite big already so I'm just going to make a magic ring of which I always finish the actual magic ring with a chain if I can get my hook through there we go okay so you don't need a ring that big all you need is a magic ring okay you could do a chain three and slip stitch ring but that would be probably, probably quite tricky to work into all you need to do is a chain one which I've already got and then six single crochets now I'm doing these fairly loosely five six okay six single crochet and then all I'm going to do is pull in this circle so you can see I've now got a nice decent tail pull in that and then I'm going to slip stitch into the first single crochet now this is why I wanted to do the single crochet fairly loosely because it can be a bit tricky to get into there so go into that first stitch don't want to get on the hook there we go and just make a slip stitch and then if you want to make the smaller pepperonis all you need to do then is just fasten off leave a decent length of tail to sew because this is what you're going to attach it to your pizza base with with the um the tails okay so leave a nice long tail for sewing in um just fasten off and then cut your yarn and that is your tiny little pepperoni or whatever you want it to be if you did this um i'm really sorry about the light here i can't see my screen very well but i think the sun is kind of affecting it so i'm sorry about that the color and lighting but if you did this in a different color it could even be a slice of olive you could do a black olive um, or something so this could be anything you want it to be it could be the start of a mushroom or something um so if you want to fasten that off and you've got your nice little pepperoni okay if you want to make the bigger slice of pepperoni don't fasten off and we're going to keep going we're just going to do one more round and we're going to chain one and then we're going to do two single crochets into every stitch making 12 single crochets all together so two single crochets into each stitch One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
and 12 okay and then this part here if you can see this it looks like a stitch but that's your slip stitch okay and then all you need to do is go into your first stitch and slip stitch or you could use the invisible join if you prefer and then just fasten off as I said leave a nice tail for sewing in attaching to your work pull that through and there is your large slice of pepperoni there we go okay so it just depends how many rounds you do this whether you have the tiny or the bigger and also you could use a smaller hook you could use a thinner yarn and that would also affect the size of what you're making so if you want a really diddy circle so this piece here if you wanted a really tiny tiny piece you could use thinner yarn and um, a smaller hook and just make a tiny tiny piece to put on there that would work great okay so you can see how i didn't really need much yarn at all so that's pretty much used that bit up now so that's good okay so that's how you're going to make your pepperoni with a sort of dark reddy brown color and then let me show you how to make these bits of peppers okay so peppers bell peppers um red yellow green orange any color um all i've done for this is made a slip knot and this is where you can you can just do any size you like i've done between around five and eight chains i think or stitches so all i've done is a chain two three four five six okay chain of six and then i'm going into the back bump of the chain you can work into whatever i'm going into the second chain from the hook and all i'm going to do is work some single crochets into each chain so one into each chain so i did um seven chains so i should have six stitches it's two three four the back bumps can be a bit tricky to work into but it does give you um, a slightly neater finish so um, one more. I think I might have miscounted but you will have one less stitch to how many chains you made okay Let's pull that in there we go a nice little piece of pepper so then I would just fasten that off again, leave a tail for sewing in. There we go. And you can make, um, you can see how big that is or how small it is compared to the um, pizza. So you can make these in whatever colour you like. You can make them as long as you like. You can curve them as you're sewing them on. You can do whatever you like. This is your pizza. <laughs> make your own pizza. <laughs> So um, I did some green ones as well. Um, and that's what I did to keep mine fairly simple. Um, but you could just use whatever colours. You could um, make whatever toppings you like. You could add some pineapple. You could add some you know, bits of ham, mushroom. Whatever you like, get creative. Um, but I sort of kept it to sort of peppers and um, pepperoni that sort of more recognisable for pizza. Pepperoni, my husband's favourite. Peppers and vegetables, my favourite. <laughs> Um, so I've kind of mixed them there. So all you do then is just sew them on. I have actually just tied mine on for now because I just wanted to show you the effect. Okay, so mine are just tied on um, at the moment. So that is how you make your pizza.